Hey friends, hello, happy Thursday. Hi, welcome to Craft Your Joy Live. It's Lisa Hetrick. I'm super excited to be here today. Today's tutorial is a little bit different. Today we're gonna do a little bit, actually not a little bit, we're gonna do a watercolor paint and chat. We did one of these last month when I did a sunflower piece. It was kind of wild and wonky. And today I thought it would be fun to do another fall themed project. We're going to do some pumpkins and flowers. So I see people popping in. Super excited. And um, yeah, we're just going to dive right into it. So today I'm also sharing a new to me product, which is some brushes from Zen Art. I've been using some watercolor brushes from Zen Art for the last couple tutorials, but this set is a fine line set and it was sent to me from Zen Art, so graciously sent it to me um, to give them a try and I've been playing with them for a while and I really, really, really enjoy them. So I thought I'd share them with you today um, while we paint and chat. So super, super fun. Um, I see people popping in. Hi, Gloria. Oh, Gloria is going to be watching on the replay. Hello, Judith, Patricia, and Cherie. Hello, friends. Hello, everyone. Okay. Today is easy going. We're going to have a little bit of a paint and a chat. And if you're on my email list, you will have gotten, let me just pop up that. Um, so right there, right there on the screen um, is the let's the paint the pumpkin blooms watercolor paint and chat. So if you're on my email list, you have already gotten the outline of our drawing today in your um, in your email. If you're watching this on the replay and you haven't gotten it, just I would encourage you to jump on my email list and I'll make sure you get it um, if you're new to my email list. So super, super fun. So if you're painting along with me today, yay. If not, and you're painting on the replay, awesome. Uh, or if you're painting this into the future, super fun. Okay. All right, friends, we're going to dive right in and we're going to just kind of paint and chat. I've got a couple announcements to make and uh, let's just go ahead to our overhead cam. Now, all of the supplies I'm using today are listed below in the description. If you're watching me on Facebook, if you're watching me on YouTube, that everything is over there in the description. So, we are going to paint this super fun little pumpkin with some funky blooms and we're going to add some details. So we're going to be doing two big techniques today, wet into wet watercolor and wet into dry watercolor and doing some fun details. Now I have printed out the outline of the drawing onto some Strathmore ready cut watercolor. This is the, this is the watercolor paper I talk about always for our paper crafting projects and we're just going to work on this small little five by seven piece now i have just um i have some da vinci watercolors and again with my fall themed watercolors i just have them out and i've already sprayed them to kind of get them activated and i think i'm going to use this thalo blue that's over here um, as well those colors are listed below. We did use this same palette um, a couple weeks ago when we did the sunflower painting, but I'll reference the colors along the way as we, um, as we paint as well. So let's just go ahead and move that up here and we're going to dive in and get started. So the brushes that I'm using today are from Zen Art, and here's what they are. So here's the brushes I'm going to be using. So I've got a round number eight Zen Art brush. I've been using this for the last couple weeks and I really, really like it. So what I'm loving about the watercolor brushes from Zen Art are that they are, they are first incredibly affordable. The, they are a synthetic that mimics squirrel. So I use a lot of brushes that are squirrel and hold a lot of water. So what I really, really enjoy about these so far is that for watercolor, they hold a lot of water. And you all know that my technique is pretty much a washy watercolor technique. So I like to have a lot of water in my brushes. 
So I'm going to be using this round today and then I'm going to be using these fine line ones from the fine line set. So this is a number two round, number five round, and a number two rigger. Now the cool thing about this set, and we're just going to dive in, is that when you when you pick it up, it comes in this um, roll, this this um, brush roll. So there's a lot in this set. So there are uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve brushes in this set. It's kind of fun. You can put some things in here. Lots of different options with the set, and then you can just kind of roll that around and kind of drop it in your bag, which is really, really, really fun. So I'm going to pop over real quick before I get started. Um, let's see. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so here's just an image of all of the brushes that you can pick up in that set. Mm. And here are all the different kinds of brush strokes that you can make with that set. Excuse me, I have to take a really quick drink. So today, I am going to be focusing on, let's go back. I'm going to be focusing on using these fine lines to do some details in my, um, in my pumpkin painting. So let's just go ahead and dive in. I'm going to pull in a little bit tighter here. And we're going to start. Hi, Catherine. Catherine just jumped in. Yeah, you know what? She just said the YouTube notice didn't work today. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. It's kind of annoying how that works. So I've got some water here. And I've got a little bit. I'm going to kind of keep my colors, try to keep everything in frame here for you. But let's go ahead and get started. We're going to get started with the pumpkin. And I am going to be mixing up. I'm going to predominantly be using this Hansa Yellow Deep color to get going. So I have, um, I kind of already activated these. I just spritzed them with a little bit of water. So I'm going to get a nice big pool of color here going. And that's what I really like about this um, palette is that I can get a nice pool of color mixed up. Okay, let's get going. We'll talk a little bit about the painting techniques. We'll talk a little bit about brushes. Now, these brushes, like I said, the Zenart brushes, the fine line brushes were sent to me just to try out. And I don't do, you know, I like to share products on this channel that I've experienced and played with and I really enjoy. So I decided that, um, you know, I really do enjoy these. So I'm sharing them. I'm starting out with the number eight round. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of going in and adding a painting with water first. We're going to start with the pumpkin. So how's everybody been doing? Hello, Pamela just jumped in. I'm doing a little bit of, we're going to prepare here for wet into wet technique. Take a little bit of this Hansa yellow, just drop it in and let it do its thing. Today we're just going to like, we're just going for whimsical and just kind of fun as we paint and chat along today. Couple of, a couple of announcements while I'm along the way is next Tuesday is um, Gina K release time. So I have, I have a really fun set. My, I know I'm going to say it and everybody's going to laugh. My my newest set that's coming out, I am really excited about. I say that every month and you're all probably getting tired of hearing me say it. But I'm really excited about this new set. It is fall themed. It's going to be fun. I know we just came out with the holiday stuff. Because um, card makers like to get their holiday projects going. But I can't let the fall go because we're still just in October. And I like to celebrate my holidays one at a time. So right now I'm just dropping in a little bit of this Hansa Yellow Deep. This Hansa Yellow is just a really nice warm yellow. Dropping that in. Looking pretty good. Okay. Seems like it might be a little bright. Let's knock that back a little bit. All right, I'm just going back and forth, adding some water in here. 
So how's everybody been? Oh, also, if you have questions along the way, just pop them in the chat. Pop a little question, a little cue or the word question in the chat. Today we're focusing on wet into wet techniques. So my brush is wet, my pa the paper is wet. I'm dropping in the watercolor and just kind of letting it do its thing. Very nice. We're just going to let that do its thing and let it dry for that first layer. Before, I'm also just going to come back here, drop a little bit of burnt sienna down here in the bottom and let it do its thing. And this is our wet into wet technique. We're going to end up going back and adding some more details and finishing so that we can get some more dimension from our pumpkin but we're actually just putting in our first layers right now okay now I'm gonna flip this I'm gonna turn my entire painting upside down so that I can start working on the flowers and again I'm gonna work with the round I think I'm gonna paint I think we'll start off the top flower here I think we'll do this flower I'm just gonna follow my lines I'm adding in just a little bit of water so I'm painting with water you can see that the water is a little bit tinged with the color that I was just painting that little bit of burnt sienna that's okay because I'm going to come in with a little bit of this lemon yellow and just drop that lemon yellow in and let that do its thing just to kind of get that washy watercolor effect going this is the wet into wet technique I'm holding my I'm holding this up very very close um, to the top of the like right here on the brush I'm really choked up on the brush because I'm this painting is got a lot of detail it's very fine detailed I've got all of these different flowers kind of layered over each other so Catherine just asked a quick question in honor of the new fuse foiling machine how does watercolor work with foils, if at all? Slightly off topic. Actually, you know what? Um, let me pop my face in. Hey, Catherine, that's a really gr great question. Okay. The Fuse Foiling Machine was just released this week by Gina K. And holy smokes, everybody just, I think it sold out. It did sell out. It sold out pretty quick. Everybody was super excited. Now, foiling and watercolor. So... The, you can use your watercolors with your foils. It will act a little bit like a resist, but you have to remember that those foils um, are being foiled on paper that isn't necessarily watercolor paper, like the polyglaze sheets and the, um, the heavyweight cardstock, things like that. The polyglaze sheets, all of the different toner-based sheets that accept the foil. So you would be able to do a little bit of watercolor washes with that system, with that whole system. And um, now that you've mentioned it, Catherine, I'll put something together and maybe kind of share that in our next video um, of how that could work. But basically the foils would work like a resist. So the watercolor will not stick to the foil, but you'll get it all around the background and things like that. So I hope that, I hope that answers your question. That was a really great question so exciting that that new um, foil system has come out with Gina okay now I've got I'm just gonna keep going here let's go ahead in here I'm adding a little bit of water okay friends so a couple weeks ago um, I did this first paint and chat so it's a little bit different. We tend to do like paper crafting projects, but I did this first paint and chat on here because everybody was kind of asking for a little bit something different. So we're we're still 
We're still doing that and giving it a go. Now look at that water. We're just going to tilt that up a little bit and let that color run. And when you get, like, see how I got this color running a little bit into that floral, into that bloom? Ah, Sue just said, can we zoom in a little? Absolutely. I can totally zoom in. How's that? I hope that's a little bit better. Yeah, let me know, Susan, if that's a little bit better. We're zooming in a little bit. It is kind of, it might be kind of difficult to see our blooms here. Okay, now I'm going to come in. I'm going to do these flowers in like some variations of red. I've got this perylene maroon and I have a lizard crimson. So we're going to do one in a lizard crimson. Actually, I went in. I really want that to be wet. Everything looks a little bit like a hot mess right now. Remember, when you're doing wet into wet, things tend to look a little messy because there's a lot of water. I'm just dropping in my water here. Okay, and just kind of painting this in. Now, if you're not on my email list and you didn't get the, the free download, let me know. You can always, the link's in the description. You can always jump on my email list. I send an email once a week. About once a week. Sometimes a little... That looks like a negative space right there. I can't remember what I did right there, but let's go ahead and add a little bit of water in. Um, okay, so I just kind of went around the whole thing and just wet it. Now I'm going to come in. What do I want to do here? Let's do a little bit of alizarin crimson. I'm just going to drop some of that alizarin crimson. See how I'm just kind of dropping it in the petals? And letting it do its thing. I'm going to come back and, and do a little bit more movement with it. And see how I'm just kind of coaxing it around a little bit. Now the petals are going to, we're going to bring back their shape when we start to do some of the fine details. Okay, great. Thank you, Susan. So it's working. Or it was in a little tighter. I'm glad you said something. Sometimes we start with a wide shot and, you know, we've got a lot of details here. So we're going to come in a little bit tighter with the angles. Okay, so see how we, we still have the shape of the flower here. Oh, look at that. We still have the shape, but it's very, like, very abstract and very washy. And that's okay. We're going to let that ride. I'll take a little bit of the perylene maroon, kind of drop that in the middle. I like to do these washy watercolor techniques. Um, it's kind of my specialty. I really like doing them. And then I like going in and adding details later. I'm going to just drop in a little bit of that yellow. Let it do its thing. So this is super, super wet. We're going to be using our detail brushes to, for a lot of detail. And I'm also going to be doing some showing you how to use those brushes to create um, some of our vines and our pieces like that. So I'm going to flip this around. Okay, I'm going to flip this around. You see how I have a couple things kind of just bleeding? That's okay. Now we're going to come over to this one. Got a yellow, I've got a red. I think we're gonna paint this a little bit darker red. And I'm gonna have this one be popped out. So wet into wet, wet into wet, wet into wet. Now I'm gonna do wet into dry. So my paper is dry. I'm gonna pick up my pigment. My pigment is super wet. I've got perylene maroon. And I'm just gonna start painting some petals, painting some um, lines into petals. And I'm gonna go back, clean my brush and then add a little bit more water. So this is, you can see that the consistency of my painting is more on this line. Where over here, we've had skim milk and 2% milk. Strong, like this is a first layer. These are our first layers. They're uh, 
not as strong as a value as this whole milk, this full strength that I'm doing right here. So I'm kind of just dropping in a full strength of that pigment and I'm going in, brush is wet, lifting up, getting a lot of pigment on my brush and I'm going in and just kind of, I'm choked up on the brush and I'm just adding in my color. And then we're going to end up going in and moving it around a little more. And this is just another way. This is a little bit more controlled. My brush is clean now. And I'm just going to tap, tap, tap around where I have that pigment, where I place that pigment. And just kind of use those colors to push them around a little bit here. Okay. Loving it. Loving it. It's going to come around here. Just kind of let those details happen. Okay. So yeah, new... Let's pick up some more Paraline Maroon. New stamp set release next Tuesday. Gina K. So super fun. So there'll be some new card tutorials next week. And as we move more into the holiday season, ooh, got a whole person, got a whole milk version of that painting right there. As we move more into the holiday season, I'll be sharing more with the Merry Everything stamp set and more painting tutorials. At least once a month now. Okay. So we've got a lot more pigment that I've put down in this version of, let's drop a little bit more down here. We're going to be adding in some more details. You can see I'm just kind of dropping in. I like to call these, we're doing a lot of wet into wet techniques, but you can see that our, our um, painting is starting to take shape a little bit. So let's go ahead in here. I'm going to take a little bit of this burnt sienna, put that, just kind of get a little color mix going. Take a little bit of that burnt sienna and a little bit of that Hansa. I want to get like an orangey color, a little bit more of an orangey color than I'm going to drop in here. And I'm just going to preserve some of my whites of my paper. So you can see how I'm just dancing my brush around a little bit. Dancing it around. Drop a little bit of that brown in there. This is kind of like my favorite way to paint. We've got this really loose and free. You could let it roll like the way it is right now. But now... We're gonna, this is our first layer. This is like our glazed layer of color. I'm not gonna worry about this. I've got this little blip going on right down here. I'm not gonna worry about that too much. We are gonna put a little bit of a, a base background in. All right, so I'm digging this. Now it's, it's wet. Now normally I would just walk away, give it some time, let it dry. This is our first layer, but because we wanna keep moving, I am going to just scooch over, scooch this over here a little bit and hit it with my heat tool just to give it a quick drop. And just pop our colors in here so that you all can take a peek at the colors. Now, our first layer. is drying. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. Now, our first layer is drying, has dried. If we, Now, look at how, this is what I want to share. With watercolor, after we've done our first layer, our first glazed layer of color, um, when it dries, it fades back in value significantly. So it gets a whole lot less vibrant. And now is when we're going to go in. We're going to probably do this painting in two or three layers. But now we're going to go in 
and we're going to start to add some of our finer details to bring this into more of a 3D look. So this painting, this original painting started out like this, very kind of whimsical and very um, colors were very, very muted, but we added, as we add the details, we bring it to life. So, okay. Now, all right, we're going to go, we're going to dive in. I'm using three different brushes from the Zen Art from that line. I've got a number two round. This has kind of become my favorite, and I am using this one a lot. A number of uh, five, um, five over zero round. That's a really fine. And then I have this rigger. And now, rigger brushes tend to be, when you have a rigger brush and a long handle like this, they tend to like be really, really long. And I am super rigger challenged. I'm going to show you how I'm going to use this. I really like this. I'm loving this rigger because it's smaller. The bristles are smaller. And I'm going to show you why. Catherine just said big difference when dry. Always huge difference when dry. All right, we're going to come in and... I'm going to start with this number two round. Now, I dig these brushes, and here's why, for fine line work. They're a little bit of a shorter handle, and then they have these, um, This they're made of wood, it's a birch wood, and then they have these, like, ergonomic, it's very, very controlled. As, I, as you all know, I'm a lefty. Um, these little ergonomic parts of the wood that just kind of help me hold my grip, hold my hand a lot more steady, which I love. And they hold a lot of water. So let's dive in. We're going to start with putting in some of the details of the pumpkin. Now, I feel like I need to kind of give that a little zippy do. Let's get a nice consistency of our burnt sienna. I am going in between my 2% milk and my whole milk here. I'm going to start defining the, the pumpkin, giving it some shape, and just kind of going in. I should just kind of only do a little bit at a time here. Going in and giving it some shape with this detail brush. Liking it. Okay. I can see that I left my paper a little bit wet, so I'm going to have to add a little bit more. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow in there too. And just kind of let these mingle. So this technique, when I'm working with this brush, this technique is more of a um, wet into dry. My paper is dry. I'm going to mix in a little bit of this Hansi yellow with it. I've got more of a controlled effect look. A controlled process here. So I'm just adding my color in and getting that second layer. I'm starting to bring up my details a little bit. Okay, coming back in. Let's go around here. Just kind of put that up there and put this detail piece in here. Add a little color. My bottom of my pumpkin is still a little bit wet. I'm just going back and forth, cleaning off my brush. I'm going to work with the colors that I have here and just kind of add a little bit more. So I am really working in between this 2% milk and this whole milk to get stronger values and more of a full strength of my color here. Okay. And I'm kind of liking this. I love using these brushes because it is kind of, you know, forcing me to come in be very mindful of the details that I'm adding. Love that. And just kind of go back and forth. It's giving me a lot of control. And I think that's what's really, why I'm really enjoying these brushes. This ergonomic piece here is giving me a lot of grip and a lot of control. So I'm liking it, liking it a lot. Okay. Okay, and I'm just adding a little bit more, just kind of working wet into dry. I'm going to need to let this area right here dry a little bit more because I'm kind of messing with it and it's kind of bleeding off a little bit. Oops, that's okay. 
even this detail brush has a lot of water. It's allowing me to get a lot of water in there, which is kind of nice. It's holding a lot of water. Now, that line right there is really drying. But look, I can just kind of go in and soften that edge, use the pigment that I'm picking up along the way, and then... Adding that in. Oh, I'm loving this. Loving it. Okay, everybody remembers like what it looked like. Now look at the details that are starting to come together. All right, going back in with that burnt sienna. If you're a lefty, I feel like these ergonomic candles are really useful because um, I've often had those little grippies that I would put on a pencil to kind of help me get a better grip. On a pencil and I think um, I think that's what kind of makes it fun love it okay loving that detail I really really like this round and I'm gonna show you we're gonna make some leaves with this round too. this detail round all right we're gonna let that detail we've added in that detail I'm going to come in, just kind of, just kind of tidy up my bottom here a little bit and let that bleed a little bit. Let it do its thing and let that bleed in. Just leave that be. Just tidying that up and leaving that be. We're going to come in for another layer to add some really intense details down there. But let's go ahead and move up. I'm flipping my painting over. Kind of looks kind of cute. Um, looks really cute. Okay. Now, we're going to go back in. This one was a lizard and crimson. This one was um, Paralene Maroon. And then we used our yellows over here. So I'm going to come in with my Hansa Yellow. And I'm working in. I'm going to go for more of a whole milk strength here. Oh, I should have turned my phone off. How are we doing? Now, I'm going to come, oh, I see a petal that I did not do. I'm just going to come in, and I'm just kind of swooshing around, adding some definition to my petals. Just following my drawing and adding some definition here, just with the tip of the brush. Add a few lines in the center here. And I'm just working with the pigment that's on the brush and just adding some definition around the petals. And we're going to come around and do the same thing for the alizarin crimson one. So that base layer of color is going to be our base layer of color. And now we're just adding some details over top just to kind of create some definition between the lights and the darks in our flowers. Oh, I'm loving that. Okay. Just kind of coming around. I'm just following my drawing. I'm just adding, just doing these like long strokes. They might look a little bit wild and wonky. And that's okay. Make sure I pick up some more pigment. Just adding these details. Oh, I love it. I feel like I have a lot of control here, too, um, with adding these details. So I'm just going to add a few things in. Just kind of following this around. Kind of digging the way this looks. <laughs> hey, Karen! Good to see you. Karen Hightower just popped in. It's great to see you here, Karen. I'm glad you could join us today. We kind of didn't do a card project today. I'm just adding some details. Adding a little bit of yellow in here. No card project today. We're doing a little paint along. 
Just covering a few watercolor techniques along the way. And we're trying out some new brushes from Zenart. Now I like the details that are happening here, but I want to add, I'm going to use this brush and I'm going to water down. I want to add a little bit of yellows. I'm just kind of going over what I've done, some of those details, with a wet brush that is like tinged a little bit with yellow. Yellow is one of those colors, if you've been around, you've, many of you have been here on the channel and have heard me said that, say this many times. Yellow is one of these colors that will jack up the luminosity when you add it in. See how I'm just kind of adding it in? It'll jack up the luminosity of your project. So it's like literally jacking up the luminosity of those petals. Ah, digging it. Digging this. I'm going to leave these whites. Do you see these whites that are happening? This is the white of the paper that's adding a little bit more lights and darks there. I'm leaving them. I got a rogue petal here. I'm not sure which one this goes to, but I think it's going to be this. Let's go ahead over. <laughs> That's the beautiful thing about the painting, right? Let's go ahead and I'm going to flip this around. We're going to work on these petals. So I've got some Perlene Maroon here. And I'm using Da Vinci watercolors today, friends, because this is what we used in our last painting. And I had a ton of it. You can see I'm just going around the edges here. And I'm just using like a stroke motion and following my drawing, just adding in those details. Um, you can remember, you can use whatever colors if you're painting this live with me right now, or if you're painting this on the replay, you can use whatever colors you have in your stash. I've got like a here's my full strength. Just picking that up. I love this little round. This might be my favorite brush out of the entire set. Um, mainly because it's a round brush and it is allowing me a lot of control. A lot of control. Uh, remember, you can use whatever watercolors you have in your stash. I'm going to come over here and, and add a little something. See, I'm just adding these little strokes. Yes, Karen just said it makes it glow. Remember, you can use whatever colors you have in your stash, just or whatever watercolors you have. I know Karen's a big Daniel Smith fan. I am too, Karen. I just seem to gravitate towards my Da Vinci a lot. Um, okay, now I'm just kind of going in with a clean, wet brush and just kind of softening. See, I'm just dancing my brush around. Just really light touches dancing it around, just kind of moving that color. Add a little bit of detail to that petal. Okay. feel like I need a little detail right down here too. Then we're going to come in. See how I'm just using the tip of my brush, adding some detail? Mm -hmm. Loving that. Alright, digging the way that looks. Now we're going to come in and I'm going to add a little bit of that. Ooh, my brush was not very clean. I'm going to add a little bit of that. Let's bring that in the frame a little bit. A little bit of that Hansa yellow. Deep. I think that might be one of my favorite colors. Hansa yellow deep. I know I say that about everything. So, And then just, this is pretty watered down. I really want this to be like really watered down. More like a wash, more like a skim milk layer. Okay. And then I'm just going to like dance that color in. Brush dance that color in. Just to jack up that luminosity. Yellow is the finisher. And, you know, because we were working in not such wet layers there, the layer underneath has dried pretty well, so I'm kind of digging that. I'm loving the way that looks. Now, this painting, remember what it looked like just a couple minutes ago? It was really kind of washed out, that first layer, that first glazed layer of um, color. 
really faded back in value. Now we're kind of bringing it up even a little bit more. Now I want to go in, we're going to go in here. I'm just dancing in a little bit of that burnt sienna. And I'm going to take a little, uh, yeah, let's take a little bit of this alizarin crimson and drop that in with that burnt sienna. I'm loving, I'm a little bit obsessed with this brush. I'm just kind of using the tip of the brush to kind of do some funky circles. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Add a little bit more. Just kind of using that brush to go around and make these little funky circles. Love it. I'm going to come back up here. Oh, I had a little bit of that color. Add a little bit of that burnt sienna in here right at the top. Clean my brush. Just kind of pull some of that color down. Loving that. I still love the abstract look and feel that we got going here. Totally digging it. Okay. Got this number two round. Now, I'm going to let this kind of naturally dry. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to come in with this rigger brush and talk a little bit about the rigger. So the rigger brush, I have said like a few minutes ago that I was rigger challenged. Now, rigger brushes in a long handle brush will be a lot longer. See how long that is? And what it does is it really allows you to get like really long, thin lines. Look, I'm even skipping a little bit. Super long, thin lines when you're painting. So, I have always found it challenging because it, with a long handled brush like this, it felt a little bit loose for me. With this brush, because the, the um, because it's a little bit, this is a shorter handle, it has this ergonomic piece to it, and it is shorter in the brush length, I feel like I have a lot more control. So I'm going to come in, I've got a little bit of, what color is this? I think this is Denise's green. And I'm going to do, I'm just really, I've got a nice, uh, almost a whole milk strength. I'm just getting a lot on my brush. And I'm going to come out. I'm starting with the tip here, just kind of come out of the flower. And then just do my little curly cues. And this brush holds a lot of pigment and a lot of water, which is really nice. So I could get that complete curly cue. With one stroke. That's kind of fun. So all the way down, so I started up here and look all the way down here is when it started to just kind of get a little thirsty and it needed a little more water. Loving the way that looks. All right, I'm gonna come around with this rigger and go. This, this, what's really cool about this brush that I really like is we've got that nice little. Oh, look at that! I'm just gonna keep going and just kind of add a little bit. So right down here, let's reconnect that one. Okay. Loving that. <laughs> okay, doing those vines just straight up dialed up the whimsy of the entire project. Now I'm going to come back with the number two and get some more of this green. And I'm going to use the number two to make some little bitty petals. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to take the tip of the brush. I've done this before. You, I've done this before on this channel. You're holding the brush um, vertically. You use the entire belly of the brush and you can get these cute little tiny leaves. A little bit of leafery. Love it. Okay. And we're just going to do a couple little leaves off of using just this brush stroke. Just a couple little leaves with this number two. Let's flick this around. 
and go right here and add a little bit more just kind of flicking moving my painting all around and this is what I do I tend to not like tape my paintings down when I'm working with them because I like to roll them around <laughs> and work on different parts of them while different parts dry okay loving that a little bit of leafery a little bit of brush stroke leafery Ah, oh, super cool. Okay, now we're getting close. I'm going to come in with this next one, this next brush. This is a five over zero. This is a really, really fine brush. Let's come in, just kind of show you. You can get, I can get a, a thick line, but really what I like about it is these little thin lines that I'm going to be able to get. All right, I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna need to get this a little bit juicified. Let's get that a little juicified. I'm gonna come in with quite a bit of that burnt sienna on the bottom here, and I'm just gonna start to add some of those lines just in the very bottom. Some of these fine details, just helping give you give the eye that shape of the pumpkin so see how some of our colors bled together I'm just gonna add a couple of these fine lines in here to bring back some of the shape let's see this would be a great fine line like if you were doing eyes or lashes or something like that Oh, that would be so good. Just kind of coming in, adding a little bit, and watch. Adding a little bit of those lines, that line work. And with a clean brush, I'm just going to just blend out, just blend out this edge just a smidge. With a clean brush. I've got my fine line work. Blending it out a little bit. Add a little bit of that yellow back in. And now we're just kind of going back and forth and adding in some details. Adding in some layers. Making the whole painting glow. Adding some of this Hansa Yellow Deep over top. Knowing when to stop. And that is when we're going to stop there. Okay, now I'm going to come in, let's see, let me take a look, I think I want to choose a different brush, yeah, let's use this one, okay, this is the two over zero round, I just want to come in, and get in here for a couple more finer details. So I'm just using or adding another detail layer and this time more close to the center of the flower. And I'm just kind of, these are just some more illustrative details. And because this brush is shorter, it's got this ergonomic handle on it, it's giving me a lot of control. So I'm basically drawing with the brush, which is kind of fun. It has a lot of detail. Okay, I'm digging that. So see how we're got, we've got a little bit more of an intensity of color in that center of the floral? Just kind of draw a few more little things. I'm kind of jacking that up a little bit. Let's come over here. We're going to do the same thing with the Paralene Maroon one. This is more of the maroon flower. I come in, just add some of those details. See it? Long stroke details from the center of the flower out. And I'm just kind of using the edges of the flower petals as my guide from my drawing. So 
going to float this around. Do, 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 do. Using It looks like I bounced a bit, a little bit back and forth between the Paralene Maroon and the and the uh, Alizarin Crimson, which is fine. I'm loving the details here. And these are more illustrative details to kind of enhance that washy watercolor look that we got going. And I'm going to resist the urge to blend them out. We're just going to leave them as the line work that it is. And that's what's really nice about oops, this particular brush set. Digging it. Love that. All right, going to come in and do a little bit more with the yellows. And then we're going to add maybe a little bit of base, maybe a little blue to the sky. And then we're going to probably be done. So, super fun tutorial today. A little paint along while I add these details into these petals. Don't forget the Gina K Designs release, the uh, fall release, is on Tuesday. 7 p.m. Central. Super fun. There's been a lot released lately with Gina, which is fun and exciting. Catherine just shared. The vines and the leaves add a wonderful whimsy and balance. Yes, they do. They just kind of balance it out a little bit, make it kind of fun, add a little bit more whimsical effect to it. All right, I'm going to come back in. And I'm just going to use this brush and see how I'm just going to use it and go around in like this little circle. Oh, loving that. All right, I'm going to do that for here too. Just kind of coming across here a little bit. I'm adding a little bit more details in the petals. And we're going to add some whites to it. But I'm going to come back with my bigger brush and take a little bit of water. This is my number eight round. Okay. I'm just going to come in, take a really light wash of some of that, uh, some of that burnt sienna, a nice little light wash of it. And just kind of let's what happens if I add a little bit of that green. If I add a little bit of that greenish perylene green to that base, kind of went over that a little bit. We're just gonna add it kind of gives it that little bit of a the dirt, the ground. I'm just gonna I'm taking a clean brush and just kind of brushing away. Softening the edges here at the bottom. All right, I'm going to turn this. I'm going to bring in some blue. I've got some blue over here. This is some phthalo blue. And right now I'm just going to paint in a little bit of water. You can see that water is a little bit tinged with the... Um, go in here with some of the red colors but that's okay I'm just gonna drop it in and kind of let it do its thing it looks a little bit overpowering right now a little bit scary but no worries I'm just kind of dancing my brush around here <laughs> Karen just said I love your creative painting just love to get that that's the whole point of our watercolor paint and chat we're not this isn't like full on perfection. We're going to talk about, we talk about some techniques along the way and we just kind of have some fun with it. I'm going to take a little bit of this paper towel, if I can get it ripped, just kind of drop that in just to kind of pull away some of that color and create that illusion of some sky. That's kind of fun. 
I'm not a big landscaper, landscape artist, but you know, we can add some of that in. I've got some of my bleed proof white here. And I'm going to go back with my, my detail brush, just number two. And just kind of pop some little tiny, whoa, Lisa, whoa. Just, this really dolls up the whimsy. I'm just dropping in a little bit of white into the centers of my, um, of my flowers here. Oh, that's a little bit big. That's okay. Like adding a little polka dot. Super fun. So these brushes have been fun to work with. I really have been enjoying using them for some more of the illustrative techniques that I've been doing. And um, I really kind of been, oh, I almost added a little bit of something at the bottom. I'm not going to do that. I almost went a little bit rogue. If you're interested in these brushes, Zen Art has shared a 10% off coupon for them. And yeah, super fun. That's in my, um, the link in the description that's there for you. And there's a link there if you're interested, but it was really generous of them to share that coupon. Um, if you're interested in these brushes, because I'm, I'm super loving them. I'm going to be using these fine lines a little bit more with our paper crafting projects because when we're working with stamps these fine line brushes are going to be really really helpful all right I think we're good with the painting let's bring in the original pretty close <laughs> pretty fun loving the way that looks and we've got like a minute to spare that was a super fun paint along let me just kind of head to the back to the front of the camera I really enjoy sharing this with you today. I'm kind of, it. The, everything outside has gotten a little bit crisper. The trees, we're pulling in these beautiful colors and I am feeling the fall, loving it. Okay, I hope you really enjoyed today's tutorial, our watercolor paint along. I talked a little bit along the way. I shared some techniques. Today we focused on wet into wet, wet into dry and using fine line brushes for some really, um, for illustrative techniques, for adding detail into your final painting. And um, yeah, super, super fun. I hope you really, really enjoyed today's tutorial. I'm sending you into the weekend to craft your joy. I hope you can have a little bit of time this weekend to get out your paints and maybe paint this project along with me. If you aren't on my email list and you didn't get the... Let's see, let me pop that back up so that everybody can see what that looked like. So this, let's see if I can point. There you go, you always have to do the opposite. This was the um, printout that I shared with my email list and it's downloadable to you and you can paint along. So uh, you can print it out on your favorite watercolor paper and you can paint along with this tutorial. Super fun, super easy going. And these are the kinds of tutorials I have in my classroom at craftyourjoy.com, except they're a little bit more elongated and I do take deeper dives into things. So if you're at all interested in some of my classes, head on over to craftyourjoy.com and take a peek. Um, there is a coupon code for your first class down below in the description. I also have my free community there where I post a lot of tutorials and a lot of extra content that I don't post out in social media. So if you aren't a part of my free community, head on over there. It's super easy and free to you. Okay, friends, I see, I see thank yous, everybody popping in, kind of saying thank you that they really enjoyed today's paint along. So thanks so much for joining me today. It, I'm so grateful that you were here. And don't forget, next Tuesday is the brand new fall release I have a really fun stamp set coming out. I'm so excited and I cannot wait to share it with you. Okay, friends, I'll be back next week with a brand new card tutorial. Of course, there will be watercolor involved and I'll be sharing my brand new stamp set with you. So have a great weekend and I'll see you next week. Thanks, friends. Bye now.